Hey everybody, I'm here to give you a presentation about plagiarism. We covered it a little bit in the copyright week, but this time, this week, we're going in depth. Uh, so I have some examples that I think will really help to illustrate plagiarism in a practical context, not just in a theoretical one. So I have some slides. Come back up to the top, do presentation mode. All right. It, we already know what plagiarism is, right? Don't use the work of other people, whether those are their words or their ideas, without giving them credit. Uh, and here's a here's a practical example, right? Uh, back in 2010, I wasn't an academic librarian. I worked for a company that did patent searching. So someone would come to us, say, I have an idea, and we'd do a search to figure out if there was already a patent on that idea. And the owner of the company had me write a blog, several blog posts, to talk about what we did and why it was important. And I wrote this sentence. I wrote, patent searching is the intersection between three disciplines, patent law, information science, and at least one scientific or technical area. OK, great. Uh, 2016, Nafisa Shakrun wrote a book. It was called Patents for Development, and it contained the following sentence. Patent information searching has been viewed as the intersection between three disciplines, patent law, information science, and at least one scientific or technical area. And that's my idea. I said it first. Those are my words, right? Could have come across this and been really surprised that someone else presented my ideas and my words as their own. But the good news is the actual passage from the book said, moreover, since patent information searching has been viewed as, quote, and then my words, additional skills might be needed. And there was a superscript 102. When you looked at the bottom of the page, it said, Kristen Whitman, profile of patent searcher. And it had a full citation of my blog post. So I wasn't upset that Nafisa Shakrun used my words. In fact, I was thrilled. I, I told all my friends and family I had been quoted in a book and I felt pretty good about myself. And Nafisa was building on work that I had done to make one of her own points. This is academic integrity. My ideas, my words, they were credited to me. My words, exact words, when they were used, were in quotation marks. And then a full citation was included to allow readers to find and read my original article if they wanted to do so. This is scholarship as a conversation. Someone wanted to build on my ideas, and I was thrilled. So let's talk about practically how you can do this without avoiding a plagiarism uh, charge, right? Accusation, I should say. If, uh, if Nafisa Shakrun had wanted to use my idea without using my exact words, she could have paraphrased it. She could have taken my words and remixed them to fit her own context in a way so that it was a totally new sentence. She could have written something like, the best patent searchers think like a librarian, but most must also understand the law and have some technical know-how. Know now, those aren't my exact words, but that's still my idea. If she had included that sentence in her book without a citation, that would still have been plagiarism of me. Not my exact words, but my idea. But if she had used a citation, just as she did in real life, it would not have been plagiarism. It would simply have been a paraphrase that was cited back to an original source. As long as the sentence has a citation, rewording this is totally fine. Double quotes aren't needed because it's not a direct quote of my actual words. Here are some rules for direct quoting. And the first thing you should know about direct quoting is you really want to use it sparingly. You really want to do it only when you really need to do it. Um, first things first, when you use someone else's exact words, you need to make sure to enclose those words in quotation marks. Presenting an exact quote as your own words is plagiarism even if you still cite to the original author, you don't put double quotes around it to make it clear they said it and you're just repeating it, that is still plagiarism. But what you also should know is that using too many direct quotes in your writing is not acceptable either. Because at a certain point, you're just turning in a paper written by other people that you have cobbled together in a series of direct quotes. You're not making the ideas your own. You're not expressing an original point, just putting together a patchwork of direct quotes, and that's not acceptable. 
When to use quotes, you really only want to use direct quotes. And here's a rule of thumb uh, put forth by a the APA style guide. Obviously, when you're reproducing an exact definition of a word, use it direct quotes and cite it. You can use direct quotes when an author has said some author has said something memorably or succinctly, or you can't think of any way to say it better in any in you know. Let's assume that my quote, which was directly quoted, was so well stated that the author couldn't rephrase it. She absolutely had to use it as it was, because this is perfect, right? Uh, sometimes you should use a direct quote when you want to respond to the exact wording of something that someone else has said. So if you're responding to someone else, you're like, well, this person said this direct quote, I'm going to take issue with this phrase within their direct quote. A lot of you are going into the medical field. And when you are writing research papers in medicine, it is also appropriate to directly quote details of research methods, findings exactly as they're presented in the original paper. And there are some other circumstances where that's appropriate as well. You really just need to re reproduce facts. There's no reason to paraphrase those facts. It's factual information, just direct quote it. The rules for paraphrasing, and you really want to get this right because paraphrasing mistakes can be plagiarism. Okay, so this, you, you cannot keep the original sentence structure uh, of a sentence. And this may seem a little unfair, but you can't just copy a sentence, change a few words, and call it a paraphrase. Uh, that's just a direct quote with some sneaky little changes. Um, it, so it, you can't do that. It, you either need to do a direct quote or you need to paraphrase and write a totally different sentence altogether. No in-betweens. Don't keep the original sentence structure. Here's an example of what I mean. The original source is my quote. Patent searching is the intersection between three disciplines, patent law, information science, and at least one scientific or technical area. A paraphrase that is actually plagiarism this is not a direct quote, but it's just a sneaky changing of a few words. Patent searching is a combination of fields, patent law, librarianship, and science or technology. You can see there's been a little bit of changing. Uh, intersection of disciplines has been changed to combination of fields. Information science has been changed to librarianship. But this is actually a paraphrase which counts as plagiarism, even if you cite it because it's so close to my direct quote. Direct quote it or change a sentence altogether. Those are your options. And the other thing is it's sneaky copy pasting, right? If you copy and paste a sentence and just change a few words, you probably haven't absorbed the information and synthesized it to make your own point. The writing is about absorbing knowledge of others, synthesizing it with your own knowledge, your own ideas, and putting it all together in your own words. And that's why sneaky copy pasting is not okay. Here, this might be a good fair paraphrase or at least a better one. So this is an example of taking my idea and using it in a different context to make a point about something else. So this person might be writing a paper called why librarians make good patent searchers and shows she's putting the emphasis on why librarians are great patent searchers, and she might say, although librarians already have some of the skills to be good patent searchers, they must also understand the law and have some technical know-how. So that combines the three ideas, but she's taking the sentence to make a completely different point to support her point about why librarians might make good patent searchers, because they have one of the three things they're going to need. Um, you know, and so she's saying, okay, they have one thing, but they're also going to need these two other things, and that's completely taking my idea and using it to support her idea and the paper she's writing. It restates the idea in a totally new sentence. It introduces new context. The emphasis is now on librarians and it still cites back to the original author who had the idea first. Remember that context can help you paraphrase well because it is easier and more meaningful to paraphrase when you think about that quote and putting it into your paper's new context. Right? You can use paraphrasing to summarize a long passage in a, re in a reference to summarize it more concisely to serve your needs, to extract the most important information that supports your argument. Um, you always want to change sentence structure to emphasize the information most important to your paper assignment. 
However, uh, it is okay to repeat or to keep discipline specific jargon key terms, right? You're reading a medical passage and it references a medical condition. You do not have to find a synonym because that's the jargon that's used in your field. You want to be speaking the same language when it comes to those words. If an article is talking about low back pain, you don't need to change the wording to something else. It's not plagiarizing or, you know, it's not any kind of problem to come back and say, okay, I'm going to say something different about low back pain. You just use the same words because it's discipline specific jargon that is okay to repeat. Because low back pain is the way that this condition is commonly expressed in the literature, if you changed it, your writing would be hard for experts to others understand, hard for other experts to understand. You don't want to write something that's so heavily paraphrased that no one else can understand what you're talking about. If you're using key discipline jargon, just, just keep it, right? Uh, there's a nice video that you can watch to around the seven minute mark. I will put it in your Moodle course. Um, as an optional video, if you want to know more about good direct quoting and good paraphrasing in a medical context. One other thing I want to mention, though, is uh, this comes up a lot and a lot of students get confused by it. It's the idea of common knowledge and the stuff you don't need to cite. Uh, you don't need to cite material that is common knowledge. Um, you do have to put it in your own words or direct quote uh, someone else. but. Uh, but yeah, if you're just using common knowledge, you don't have to cite it, just put it in, make sure you put it in your own words, but you can still use all that discipline specific jargon, right? The common knowledge, what it means is it's basic unsighted facts that you can find in multiple scholarly sources, for example, textbooks or other reference works. If you find information repeated in multiple places around the web and it's not cited, that doesn't really count as common knowledge just because there are a lot of plagiarists on the web. You can't count something as cited as common knowledge if it's just plagiarized, <laughs> right? Someone else is plagiarizing it. So you wanna make sure you can find references to this fact in multiple reference works. Uh, if you can't find a clear origin of a fact and you believe it's called uh, common knowledge, uh, you don't have to cite it. However, if you can find a clear origin of a fact, just go ahead and cite it, you know? It might be common knowledge, but you know this source, just go ahead and cite it, yeah, just be safe. Um, this is an example, okay? We're talking about low back pain. Uh, I was trying to find a definition of low back pain and I found that it's acute if it's a le lasts less than four weeks, subacute if it lasts four to 12 weeks, or chronic if it lasts more than 12 weeks. Right. If you're going into physical therapy, this might be very common knowledge in the physical therapy field. In that case, if it's common knowledge, everybody already knows it. You don't have to find a source for it. You don't have to cite it. I went to two different reference sources up to date as a database. That's like an encyclopedia uh, that was unsighted and up to date. It was unsighted on the CDC website as well. So I found it in multiple places on the web. I don't really need to cite it. But then I came across the original source. It was listed in the AMA Journal of Ethics in 1995. So since I know the original source, why not cite it? If in doubt, and you know the source, just cite it, right? Um, yeah, so it's common knowledge because you're writing for other physical therapists. The information is widely known within your field, the definition of low back pain. And no one would dispute or contradict the information. It is just fact that we accept. It's a common knowledge. Um, yeah, so there are some types of plagiarism just worth going over. I mean, you can intentionally plagiarize, uh, copy paste text from the internet, websites, blogs, Wikipedia, don't do it. Don't copy paste. That's plagiarism, right? Don't find an Amazon book review, copy it and use it as your evaluation section of your annotation. I will discover that. And it is plagiarism. Uh, sometimes plagiarism happens unintentionally when you copied something into a Word document intending to plagiarize it, then you thought it was your own words, so you used it in your paper and you just forgot it was someone else's words. Well, that's why you need to be careful because unintentional plagiarism is still plagiarism and it's still a serious infraction. Um, 
Yeah, as I said, poor paraphrasing, making only cosmetics to the original language without changing section, sentence structures, plagiarism. There's such a thing as mosaic plagiarism, where you can take parts of sentences from different sources and just combine them into your own fragrant, your Franken sentence, mishmash sources all together and call it a paraphrase. Um, you can also self plagiarize by using work you did for another class and turning it into this class. So if you want to do that, you just have to ask both professors if they're comfortable with you turning in work you already did for another class into this class. And I always say yes on my side, but the other professor also needs to say yes. And even in the professional world, you may think once you graduate, no one's going to be scrutinizing what you do, but um, this is a case of a hospital administrator who copied passages from his, from inspirational blogs. He wanted to send out emails every week to his employees and say, hey, you know, let's, let's really do it. But he went to blogs and just copied and pasted content from blogs. That's dishonest. He was representing it as its own, his own work. And people decided they didn't want to work with this dishonest person. And he got fired for this. So there are real, real consequences. Uh, you guys know all the consequences already. Um, I have later uh, in the course, um, I have created a quiz that will require you to know the stuff in this presentation to answer the quiz questions. But if you get confused, just email me and say, hey, you know, I think this is the answer, uh, but can you just make sure my understanding is correct? Basically, anytime you're just not sure about something, just email me. And, and I'll tell you, I'll give you feedback. And I'm so happy to do that so that you can get a good grade on your quiz. Because maybe I didn't express something very well in this video and you need me to clarify it. And I am happy to do that. And uh, everybody's doing a great job so far. So just, just keep it up. And I will talk to you soon.